everyone. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to our channel. It's me, Miley. And Eric. And we are so glad that you are joining us today. Um, I will say we are filming this video using my big giant tripod that I bought for the first time and it is like revolutionary. I feel a little bit like I'm on a film set. Like I'm a real professional. <laughs> anyway, all that to say, um, we are coming at you with a different kind of video today that we've actually been really excited to film. Yeah. So I hope the title was a little bit intriguing and you probably have an idea of what we're going to talk about, but essentially we're going to be sharing with our YouTube viewers small victories that we have realized have happened in quarantine. We know stay at home, COVID, everything that's been happening in the world for months and months um, is really negative and horrible and affecting people in horrific, awful ways and the world will never be the same. And that's really hard to stomach. So Eric and I were having a conversation the other day just about how we feel like... We feel like, or at least I had felt like I hadn't gotten enough done. So we were re get really getting down on ourselves. So we started thinking about all the small things that we have accomplished during quarantine and that made us feel better. We have been really intentional about some things in our life that have led to really positive changes and victories is what we're calling them, um, that really helped us feel better about our time in quarantine. And we really wanna share that with you guys, not to be like, hey, look how awesome we are, because again, these are very small, kind of silly things um, that aren't even worth bragging about, but that's the point. So we're sharing ours with you today to encourage you to think through the same small victories that you've accomplished in quarantine. And we would really love for you to comment those small victories down below in the comments in the comment section because we would love to talk to you about them. Um, and also, while we're on this intro, what else do we want them to do? Smash that subscribe button! You know, I have um, realized that it's not going away anytime soon, and so I should probably just embrace it. It is so loud though, man. It's so loud and embrace do it. For it. Them. You don't do it for them. And ring the like, bell. Ding, ding, yeah, ding. ring the bell, subscribe, do all the things. Give it a so, like. So, without further ado, we are going to jump right in. This is gonna be kind of a casual, like, talk to the camera, talk to each other, kind yeah. of explore our COVID journey and the small victories we've accomplished. I've got them written down in my bullet journal. First small victory is we got our house completely decorated. Yep. That was kind of the biggest of the small victories. And they have seen that video. You have seen that video. I'll also link our house tour down below so you can go watch our um, finished, decorated, beautiful house tour. Um, I am a very meticulous person, a very, um, like simplistic and um, in terms of style, simplistic. Simplistic and like minimalist, hardcore. Like everything has to have a place and be in its place. Mm -hmm. So for me to feel healthy and happy in an environment. And yeah. so getting our house put together was a huge undertaking, but a thing that needed to happen as soon as possible for my mental health, just so I could feel really great about the place that we're living our home and we were able to get it done a lot quicker because obviously we would have eventually gotten there but we were able to really focus and hone in on getting it done so we're really proud of our house we love it it is such a wonderful place to live and be and do life together so that was our biggest quarantine accomplishment was putting our house together number two what's number two scrimp number two is this the channel, the YouTube channel. We started a YouTube channel. Yeah. And what a silly quarantine thing to do. But you guys, it's been so fun. Like I, I always joke that my dream career is being a YouTuber so that I don't have to put on pants. Yes, I am wearing pants in this video. Um, but for years and years and years, my family and friends have told me that I need to start a YouTube channel. Eric's told me that I need to start a YouTube channel for years. And I was so excited that we took it on as a project to do together. Yeah. And although I do manage the channel and I do all the editing and stuff like that, and I film videos by myself sometimes, um, I love that it's something that we get to do together. Mm -hmm. And it has been so fun to just have something to dedicate my time to. Um, I literally thought two people would watch, my mother and my sister, and that's it. But actually we have a little pool of subscribers yeah. and it's growing by a couple every week. 
Um, we've had great responses on a lot of our videos. I've been able to stick to a really specific posting schedule. Mm -hmm. It's just been so fun. And what the craziest part about it is people in my real life have been like, hey, I saw your video. I have this tip for you. Or I loved what you did in this video. I've done that too. Or I tried this because you tried it. Like, um, it's just been so cool to see the response from people. And we are like a tiny little baby channel, but it's just been so fulfilling to like have this little pod of the internet yeah. um, that real people watch and like and um, talk to us about. So mm -hmm. what do you think about the channel? No, I think it's a lot of fun. Sometimes you get a little like, <laughs> do it for the vlog. Um, <laughs> one time I jumped out and scared her when we were just here at home alone. It and scares she, me all the time. She it's so jumped annoying. and screamed and then got so mad that I didn't film it for you all to watch it. <laughs> because so. why would I want to sit through being scared if I can't get any views out of it? I do it for the love of the sport, <laughs> not, for the, not for the accolades. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, so we love starting yes. our YouTube channel. If you are a subscriber to us, thank you. You are awesome. We hope it keeps growing. And even if it doesn't, I just have so much fun doing it. Yeah. It's like cathartic almost. It's mm -hmm. so silly. But I think everyone should start a YouTube channel. Probably not because then my chance of success would probably go down the toilet. But it really is so fun to have a schedule, to have like meticulous checklists and design things and work on, I don't know. It's just really right up my alley and it is so fun. So you should do it. Okay, number three. Oh my gosh, number three. We've established a weekly schedule. Yes. Which, how funny that it took quarantine and schedules being totally erased for us to actually make a schedule and stick to it. Yeah. Well, and I think it was you, once again, taking over the YouTube channel mm -hmm. necessitated, because I'm I'm editing podcast stuff and doing that. Which Eric has, a, if you don't know, Eric has a really successful podcast network um, with thousands of downloads and yeah. listens and um if you like D, D, check it out it's very niche um, but it takes up a lot of his hobby time yeah and so with you editing this uh and managing the channel we needed to come up with a way to where it wasn't like monday night i spend the evening editing and then tuesday comes around and you're like oh well i need to edit tonight and so right. we're just never spending any time together right so tuesdays and thursdays are like edit hard and fast we are not hanging out. We're not watching <laughs> TV. Um, well, technically, it starts after dinner. Yeah, we, we eat always dinner have dinner together, and usually we'll watch like a YouTube video during dinner if we've already like caught up on our days. But yeah, it's been so nice, and really that translates into my next point, which is we've been spending more time together. We've been so good at intentional time together mm -hmm. because we have those edit nights on Tuesday and Thursday. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we sit down and watch a movie together or sit down and do something. Um, one of the really fun things we've been doing, which I think is maybe my favorite thing that's come out of quarantine, is our movie night. Yeah. The, this is a great tip Yeah, this is, for this couples, is a, a pro tip for, for people out there that have a hard time picking what to watch. And I think it was my idea. It was. Oh, I'm a um, genius. <laughs> so, yeah, we basically have set up a rotation to where night one, it's a joint movie, something we like saw a trailer for, commercial for, is like, oh, that looks really good. We maybe don't want to see it in theaters, but we definitely want to watch it. And so we'll pick a movie from that like bucket that we have. That both of us are really interested yeah. in watching. And then the next movie night, it's Miley's choice. And so it might be a movie that she's really been wanting to see that I wasn't interested in, or a movie that she loves that she wants me to see. And then the next night, will be like that for me, where it's something that I really want her to see. Um, I've actually forced her to watch a couple of horror movies uh, through that, which she never would have done before. You guys, it's um, been horrible. I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. I made you watch High School Musical, so I and, feel like that was a fair trade. And Truth Beverly Hills. Okay, first of all, do not start the hate on Truth Beverly Hills. It is the greatest movie of all time, starring comedy queen Shelley Long, and I will preach that until I die. So you should all watch Trip Beverly Hills. It is amazing. Anyway, that that has created a lot less dead time of us like flipping through Netflix yes. and then going, well, let's see what's on Hulu. Let's go over to Amazon Prime and see what's on that. Quarantine has really helped us intentionally spend more time together, mm -hmm. which has been great. Yeah. Because, you know, I like you a little bit. I like you too. <laughs> Another thing that we've intentionally been doing together, which is our next point, is biking. 
First of all, if you know me at all, you know I'm allergic to the outdoors, as my Aunt Nikki loves to say. But no, really, I hate outside. It's hot, it's gross, there's bugs, there's dirt. I just don't understand why people want to be outside. But... It's been fun. Why did we buy bikes in the first place? You wanted to. I just got the random inkling <laughs> to buy a bike, I guess. That's so weird yeah. that I would have even had that initiative. But... We bought bikes. There's a there's a little park like three blocks over, so we just ride from our house down there, do a lap around it, and then come back. And it's a nice way to spend a half hour. Like yeah, just... and it's I mean it's exercise. Yeah. It really is, especially with my one gear bike that I bought, not knowing it was a one gear bike. Yeah. Pedaling in the heat uphill, singing the climb by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> if you get that reference, that means you're an avid vlog watcher. <laughs> so we've been biking like. One to three times per week. Yeah. Pretty consistently. It's so funny. When we first bought bikes, you were like, yeah, we can buy bikes, but I know what's going to happen. We're going to ride them two times and never again. And that has not been the case. That's true. We've ridden our bikes so much. Like in the past three months, we've probably taken oh, 50 yeah. bike rides. Mm -hmm. It's just a great way to unwind and do like a, a different activity together, get out of the house a little yeah. bit. So that's been really fun. And I mean, we ride at a pace to where we can like talk and right. talk about our days and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's nice. Yeah. yeah, it's really fun. Okay, so the next thing that we've been doing um, in quarantine that's worth celebrating is something that we suck at. Consistent consistently suck so hard at we've been spending literally years trying to get good at this because it's something we've both known like we would save so much money it would yeah be just it's better nothing but good benefits but we just didn't do it and honestly like all it took was the world shutting down for a month <laughs> and honestly like this doesn't even constitute to me as a small victory i would call this a big ass victory yeah language <laughs> um, big donkey victory. No. Oh. <laughs> what did you think that meant? I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, because we've struggled for so many years with being consistent at this, but we have just killed the game in quarantine and we have established habits that will last and last. We should probably tell them what it is. Yeah. Meal planning and cooking at home. We were just getting to a place where we were like, it would be easier to cook at home. Yeah. We're at the house. We, when we decide what to do for dinner, it's going to take 45 minutes to an hour for our Postmates to arrive. Like, let's just cook food and we'll save so much money. We've been so successful at meal planning. We found some recipes that are new staples that we incorporate pretty much every week or every other week. Mm -hmm. And we've started the Sorted Guys um, Their PAX, app. PAX app where we get really new, unique recipes that incorporate the same ingredients um, to cut down a new shopping list every week. And yeah. so we have comfort food that's a staple, like my spaghetti is very delicious and we probably have that once a week-ish. Um, and then I force Miley to eat things that she doesn't want to. But then we to. also experiment with really new recipes. And when we say cooking at home, we're not like buying a pre-made thing and chucking in the oven for right. 20 minutes and then eating it. Like we're making the food. And Even down to Eric just recently for with some birthday money that he got, um, bought a pasta maker attachment for our KitchenAid. Like he's going to start trying to make actual pasta noodles. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've really been experimenting with cooking. We've just done so great for ourselves at cooking home cooked meals and really meal planning and budgeting our groceries saved so much money. Our last one, before we share just a few personal accomplishments, our last victory has been reading more slash, I haven't really been reading more than I usually do, but a different bedtime routine mm -hmm. that has revolutionized our world. And we're not gonna tell you too much about it because we filmed a 30 day challenge video that should be coming out in the next few weeks um, where we tried at bedtime this new routine that we're about to tell you about that has really changed the sleep that we get mm -hmm. and the quality of sleep, our ability to fall asleep easier. Well, and I'm reading a lot more. Like You're you reading a lot more for sure. Reading, I'm consistently but... reading before this, but go ahead and tell them what our bedtime routine is now. Basically, it's based on a couple of studies that I saw where 
Um, if you don't engage with any kind of electronics 90 minutes before you want to go to sleep, your sleep is a lot better because you're not getting the blue lights that interfere with melatonin production. So I presented the idea to Miley that like, we plug our phones in, in another room, we have an alarm clock now for an hour and a half, we sit in bed and we read. I have my Kindle because it doesn't have an LED screen so I can still read it as part of the um, experiment challenge thing. And I like um, traditional books. Yeah, but I mean, you, it used to take you. Because of my OCD. Um, forever to fall asleep. I had such insane problems sleeping. And not, not sleeping, once I go to sleep, I'm pretty much good, but just the falling asleep and the shutting my brain off is extra hard for me. And so getting to a place where 90 minutes before bed, I am winding my brain down through the, an exercise of reading or just like laying in bed and talking, mm -hmm. like winding down for the day has been revolutionary and I can fall asleep like that. It's really insane. It's been so beneficial to us and it's been fun too to just like go to bed at the same time and lay in bed and read together. Like yeah. we usually, our bedtime is 10 o'clock and we'll read until 11.30 and go to bed. Sometimes I don't make it till 11.30. Um, and sometimes Eric doesn't come to bed right at 10, yeah. but it's been an amazing way to like revolutionize our sleep. And, um, it's been such a good victory that we are celebrating in quarantine. Yeah. Those are our joint small victories during quarantine. And really those tiny little things, they add up. Like that list seems pretty small and ins insignificant, but when you put all of those things together, we really have introduced a lot more productivity in our life, a lot more accountability in our life. Yeah. We've been able to establish routines and actually stick to them. Mm -hmm. And it's just been amazing. Yeah. With all the horribleness that COVID has brought and all the bad, bad, bad things that aren't going away for a long time, like it's been good to put a positive spin on it. Yeah. Um, and kind of intentionally think about the things that we have been able to accomplish and the positive things that have impacted our life in this crazy time. So we really want to hear from you guys some of the small victories that you have accomplished during quarantine. Um, so please comment those down below. We really want to kind of open up that dialogue and hear you know, what other people have done. Uh, and hopefully that will give us some inspiration to do even, to accomplish even more small yeah. victories. So before we close out this video, we just wanted to end with a few personal yeah. victories that we've established during quarantine, ones that are specific to me and specific to you. So talk about yours, Scrimp. So the first one is, the, uh, the amount of time that I'm staying connected with my family members has has grown a lot. My parents and I talk probably once a week, mm -hmm. if not a little bit more frequently, just to you know, catch up on everything that's going on, <laughs> how crazy things New are. New updates in life, because um, they seem to happen a lot more frequently. Yeah, and then also uh, my Mima will text me when videos come out. <laughs> Hi Mima. And, and we'll talk and, and text and it's it's been great. And so, um, that's one of the big ones for me. And the other one for me is one that I've been meaning to do for a long time, but I, I very much like curated the type of content that I'm consuming. So uh, for a long time, I was subscribed to like, I don't even, I didn't even count how many YouTube channels I had hit the subscribe button on. And we that just stresses me out. go through my subscription and thumb past like five or six videos before I found one that I wanted to watch. And the ones that I, that I was watching just weren't of any real value. So I went through my, my YouTube subscriptions and I cut out probably 80%. Like I, I now have to wait for a new video to come in from somebody that I'm subscribed to, which has not been the, the case before. And then like the type of stuff that I'm, I'm reading and consuming on the internet, I've just become a lot more aware, I think through our joint victories, how valuable my time is and yeah. so why would I spend that time watching something that isn't enriching my life in some way those are my two personal things uh, my two personals well three because two sort of go hand in hand but I've been trying to get back on my focus on health journey um, if you have followed our channel and know or know me personally about a year ago I lost about 40 pounds which was incredible um, I felt amazing. I looked great. I felt confident about myself. Um, and then we moved in kind of 
started new jobs and everything in our life changed and that led me to gain most of what I had lost back. So I have been really trying now that our lives have kind of settled and we have established routines, I've tried to eat healthier and establish more healthier habits. So, I, and I'm not doing it to lose weight necessarily, although I would love for that to be a byproduct. Um, but that's not what I'm focusing on this time. I'm focusing really on just making healthy choices and getting to a place where my body feels physically better. Um, I have lost about five to seven-ish pounds so far. So that's really great. And another thing I've started doing is drinking more water. And I'm not good at it. And I will probably never be the person that drinks two liters of water a day or whatever the recommended daily insane value is. But, and I still drink Diet Dr. Pepper because I'm addicted to it and it's the most delicious drink in the entire universe and I will probably always drink it and come at me in the comments, please. But I have been drinking more water. I used to never drink water, so I count that as a great win. And then my last one is very silly, but it made me very happy. Um, I have grown out my nails. In the beginning of quarantine, I said, I'm going to take this opportunity to not paint my nails at all and grow them out to where they are more strong, less brittle from layers and layers of gel over and over and over again and get them to a much healthier place. It's just been amazing to see the growth of my nails and the nourishment of my <laughs> nails. That's been really awesome. So I'm shutting the bullet journal. That's all on our list. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments what you've accomplished. Yes, we small want, victories you can take. We want to know what your small victories are. So I think that's it for us today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.